Hi folks, Dave with DBS Tech Talk. And today we're going to talk about the TRN BA5. I want to thank the viewer and subscriber who sent these over for a review. Do greatly appreciate it. You know who you are and you rock. So the TRN BA5. Five BAs, one base, one mid, three treble. Very interesting. And um, we'll get into that review here in a moment. But before that, uh, I recommend that you take a look down below and uh, see the playlist that we're used to test these. Also, for all the information as to where you can buy these, other items that are recommended or talked about in this review, and all kinds of other information regarding how you can send inf gear to me to review and how you can get in contact with me, how you can support the channel. So check out the links down below. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, so the TRN BA5. They come in this very small, typical TRN box. Nothing too ex exquisite about it. Simple. Love it. Very easy. There's some specs on the back side here. They weigh 15 grams. They have an impedance of 20 ohms, sensitivity of 101 decibels, and a frequency response of 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz. And as I said, five BAs, one base, one mid, three treble. They include a very simple unboxing. You get typical TRN KZ cable and uh, th three sets of tips, small, medium, and large. I actually used the stock tips, did not see any reason to change tips. I really enjoyed the fit and feel of the stocks. And so I didn't even try any others. The cable um, that was sent along with it, that came with it, I didn't use too much. I did use it for a little bit, but he, um, the person that sent him over had him kind of set up with this knot system going right before the microphone. And I didn't want to undo that and not be able to remember how to put it back together. So I just used an alternate cable. I did not notice any sonic differences between the stock cable and the cable that I used. The microphone on the stock cable works really well, by the way, and I had several people compliment the sound of it, and they said I sounded very good, and I didn't have any issues with connectivity or anything like that. So stock cable works. I just didn't use it because I didn't feel like undoing that knot and trying to figure out how to redo it. All right, so the... BA5 themselves, they're very well built, magnesium alloy build, uh, the typical universal shape, have all kinds of curves on there. I found them to be somewhat decently comfortable. I found that this little ear hook part didn't quite fit in my ear properly, and I had some issues with fit. Um, but once you get it in place, it worked fine, and I could wear them for a couple hours before I had to readjust as the... Um, it just kind of start hurting my ears a little bit. They're a little bit on the chunky side also. And so uh, if you don't like heavier IEMs, these may cause problems. As far as tips, the stock tip, as I said, is very well done. Don't have any issues with it. The nozzle and bore size is a little bit on the hard side to fit third-party tips. Some of them like to stay on, some don't. So uh, you just kind of have to play around with it if you are going to change tips. It is a little bit small. But overall, I find that they're built very well and I don't have any issues really with it. Highly recommend them for the build. Do connect via two pin. And the TRN BA5, five BAs, one base, one mid, three treble. Base. The base on the TRN BA5 is very much mid base focused. It is a little bit on the forward side and it has more impact and punch in the mid base and upper base than it does in the sub base. Sub base, you just get a little bit of texture and a little bit of details, but it's really not very prominent. From about 50 hertz down, it's pretty much rolled off um, and doesn't really exist. So if you're a base head, these probably wouldn't really give you that 
rock, earth, and body that you're looking for. Uh, but if you do enjoy a solid and punchy bass, the BA-5 may provide that. As far as texture and detail of the bass, it's all right. Uh, it's average. I found that they do lack a little bit of detail and, uh, and they um, are a little bit hazy on, on, the reach, on the resolution end of it. But for the most part, they're pretty decent. I, I do not have any problems with it. Uh, being muddy or bloaty or anything like that they are a little bit on the warmer side a little bit bloomy so they bleed into the to the mids uh somewhat but then when we get into the mids the, you get the warmth from the bleed from the base but the lower mids to middle mids are, are recessed and vocals sound thin and far back into the mix and it's just kind of um unbalanced between like male vocals and uh, deeper sounding instruments versus um, instruments that have a higher uh, tone frequency and voices like females or our higher uh, male vocals um, sound more full and robust and so it's just kind of unbalanced and uh, I found that to be a little bit annoying and uh, disturbing for my for me as I am a very much a mids lover and a vocal lover also, the mids do struggle somewhat with metallic timbre. Um, it's not the worst offender when it comes to metallic timbre, but it is prevalent, and you can hear, especially on like woodwinds, brass instruments, pianos, and guitars. Um, it'll they'll sound a little tinny and a little glary. And then um, also the upper mids have quite the climb and they can they're borderline shouty uh they're not quite there unless the song is very aggressive in the upper mids region out to begin with but for the most part they're just kind of borderline and so if you're sensitive to that you may find them to be a little bit on the brighter side also the they're not the best resolving mids and there's a little bit of grain and harshness in them. Um, and the clarity um, is a little bit lackluster. It's not the worst offender again, but it is um, definitely noticeable. The treble, especially in the lower treble, suffers just like the upper mids do, in which it is on borderline shouty. And then it's also borderline bright going up from about 8 to 10K. There's, just, there's a little bit of a of a peak there and they can sound just a little bit on the brighter side so if you're sensitive to brighter treble these may affect you a little bit but i didn't find it to be um a problem uh, i just think that i shouldn't i mentioned that a little bit and then uh, just like the mids they do suffer a little bit from metallic timbre and they have that slight issue of borderline harshness um, and graininess, especially on the upper treble uh, regions, they they sound a little bit like they're strained or trying a little too hard. Um, but for the most part, I don't have any issues um, with the bass, the mids, and the treble, other than that recessed and unbalanced uh, mids region and the slightly um, shouty upper mid lower treble region. But well, I find them to be a fun sound. I found that the BA-5 to be um, pleasant, definitely not natural or neutral sounding, but they are a fun sounding uh, IEM. As far as soundstage, the soundstage is wide, but it's also got some restrictions. It's a little average when it comes to spacing, separation, and isolation. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Uh, it's just kind of average. And then it's very center focused. So kind of like presses everything in towards the middle. Even though things are out here, they always kind of sound like they're kind of being forced in right into this region. And it's also three boxed. So when things travel across the stage, it'll go right, center, left. It doesn't transition smoothly across. And it always looks like you're looking straight across the stage. It doesn't really have a lot of depth and layering to it. It sounds like it's a, it's you're just kind of looking at a flat piece of paper. Overall, I find that the BA-5 is average for the price. Uh, it's nothing special. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just okay for the price point. Uh, $60, $70 for the BA-5. I think you would be content. Uh, I think that it would be pleasing to you um, and it would be sufficient, but it's not going to wow you. Uh, it's not really going to disappoint you either. It's just kind of, hmm, this is good. 
And I kind of wish that it had done a little bit more. As far as competition goes, uh, I found that the Jade Audio EA1 is more competent in all areas. Um, it's more controlled, more refined, just smoother, and just more pleasant sounding overall. I would uh, definitely, if I had the choice between the two, I would pick the EA1. I found also that the 10 Hi-Fi T3 is also more competent, does better with detail retrieval and resolution, and just having an overall just more natural tone um, than the BA5. The 10 Hi-Fi T2 Plus is going to be a little bit more on the base light side, but it's going to sound more natural and um, just an overall cleaner sound. Uh, detail retrieval will be better. Resolution probably about on the same. And then the Moondrop SSR, and these are going to be more neutral sounding. Um, they are going to be more analytical and more cl clinical sounding, but they're going to have better detail retrieval, better uh, resolution, and just overall a better sound stage with imaging and separation isolation um, that is more accurate and true. So I found that the BA-5 didn't do anything wrong, didn't do anything right. It just kind of was average. Um, I found that it played very well with all the different dongles that I used. Didn't use it on the desktop. Um, it's only a $70 IEM. Didn't see any reason to use it on a desktop setup. But I did use it with all the dongles. I used it with a uh, ADV access port light, the Razer DAC amp, the X-Duo Link, and also with the NextDrive Spectra X. And in order of how I preferred the sound, um, the oh, I also used it with the Tempotech um, Sonata HD. And so the ways that I preferred the sound with those was from the ADV access port light was a little too warm, a little too thick. I uh, had good detail retrieval, just kind of compacted everything together. The Tempotech Sonata HD was kind of next had a little bit warmer sound, kind of sound like it compressed everything together and um, added nice warmth and overall presentation. It just sounded a little too compressed. The Razer DAC amp was in the middle. It, it didn't have quite the bass and the warmth texture. It was a little bit more open and airy sounding. And then the X-Duo Link is uh, next in line and that has a good balance between bass, warmth, and just overall presentation airy and I found that that was a very pleasing and then the uh, Spectra X of course being $190 is a little overkill <laughs> for the BA5 but I found it was a very pleasant sound and I actually really did enjoy the Spectra X a lot with the BA5 it kind of helped that metallic timbre get cleaned up a little bit and um, added in some nice um, mid texture and helped out the sound stage a little bit, but it still had that center focus. So overall, I find that the TRN BA5 is just another um, IEM in the sixty to seventy dollar range, and it just doesn't do enough to to set itself apart from the rest of the pack. It just kind of is in, in the pack and kind of going along. It, it just doesn't do anything to stand out and say, hey, I'm different. Check me out. This has been Dave with DBS Tech Talk. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.